Hello, I'm Andy and welcome to Element 14 Presents. Now, I like nothing more than sitting down in a comfy chair with a company of a good book and escape to faraway lands and meet wonderful characters. And wouldn't it be great if you could share this with other people? And that's where a book nut comes into. It's a small diorama or scene that sits on the shelf with the other books. It's literally a view into the other world. Now, I like to make my scene a little bit more interactive, so I've added some lights a vision detection system and a display. So today we're going to build a wizard themed book nook. Amazing hacks, inspired designs. Each week Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering and more. The system is based around the Arduino Portenta board. This contains a powerful microcontroller which is capable of processing both images and machine learning algorithms. Connected to that is a vision shield which contains a small black and white camera and sends data back to the microcontroller with the high speed bus on the back of the board. Also connected is an e-ink display. This receives data over the SBI bus and can keep displaying an image even when the power has been removed. The last thing is a number of LEDs that will be scattered around the scene and controlled from the microcontroller. To control the large number of lights in this project, I could have used a serial to parallel shift register like used for the hex game, but uh, I wondered about a digital protocol instead. The first one that came to mind was the DMX protocol, which is used by stage lighting to control the, the large lights you see. Uh, around modern theatres. But as I was working on a smaller scale, my mind came to, to DCC, which is used by model railway enthusiasts as the digital command and control to turn on and off the lights and motion of the layouts. So I quizzed a, a friend who was a model expert uh, and my friend JD, he said, um, why not look at the WS2811 series? It's like, oh yes, of course, the good old NeoPixels. Well, I try those. The WS2811 and the newer variants 2812 and 2813 are a small module that combines a control chip with a number of LEDs. Typically these are just RGB, but some of the newer variants include a white LED uh, for better rendering of, of white light. The protocol controlling the modules uses pulse widths of different durations to represent the ones and zeros of the digital signal. This allows the protocol to be very fast and also require no separate clock signal. As well as being able to buy individual pixels or even the separate controller chip, it is also possible to buy pre-made modules in either long chains or in special shapes. This makes it a particularly versatile device for sophisticated lighting designs. The parts we're going to use for this project are the Arduino Portenta, it's one of the new Pro boards, the Portenta Vision Shield, so that comes in this case with Ethernet and an SD card. You can also get that with a LoRaWAN radio module, an e-ink display, so these are SBI displays and I did actually swap this in with a, a smaller module. A number of NeoPixels, these are the RGBW version, so I can get white light as well as um, all the colours. And finally, a number of 1 to 150 scale buildings, or N-gauges it's commonly known, and some street lights. The buildings for our book nook have been assembled from cardboard kits designed for N-gauge model railways. It's the perfect scale for our scene. The cardboard is built up in layers, which gives a 3D effect to the models, as well as providing rigidity. The tools required for this project include some scissors for cutting out the plastic glazing panels, a sharp knife to remove the parts from their card sheets, and a rapid acting PVA glue which gives just enough time to assemble the parts without needing to clamp them. These particular kits provided some variation in the form of different windows, doors and roof colours, but you can use parts from different kits, a process is called kit bashing. One of the problems with using newer hardware such as the Arduino Portenta is the documentation and examples aren't as rich as, as you'll find with earlier models such as the Arduino Uno. 
One detail I was lacking was the technical specification for the lens on the camera module. I needed to know the angle so I could determine the size of the book nook. So I used these little characters to do some experiments and determine the correct dimension for the width of the book nook alleyway. Do you like free stuff? You can join the Road Test program. You can get free dev kits, test equipment, and even online training courses. In exchange for a detailed review, join our Road Test program. Learn more at the link below. Ah, free stuff? When I started out writing code for this project, I looked at MicroPython. Arduino has teamed up with OpenMV to provide some tutorials and examples that work with the Vision Shield and the M7 Core. These worked fine on their own and reliably detected faces in the images from the camera. However, I could not get either the NeoPixels or the e-ink display to work in MicroPython, so I changed my plan to run those on the M4 Core in C and then use the internal RPC mechanism to trigger that from the M7 core. But the M4 core doesn't run by default and the tools and the commands were not in place to allow me to trigger that from MicroPython. So I had to abandon that idea too and I decided to run the whole thing in C. I found some C examples from ARM that used TensorFlow Lite and detected faces reliably so I used those as the base for my program. Again, I struggled with getting both the display and the NeoPixels to work on this board, but I eventually found an example from Waveshare and ported that across. I used the Arduino library from Adafruit and added an extra module for the Portenta to make the NeoPixels work. Once these were all working independently, I combined them together, and again, I found uh, problems with the board. There was pins used by the camera module that weren't documented, and eventually, by trial and error, discovered which ones they were and got all three items working together. To put the camera image on the display required some conversion. The camera produces a 320 by 240 image. So the first step is to crop that square and then resize that to 80 by 80 for the display. Next up, the grayscale needs to be turned to black and white. I use the Floyd Steinberg algorithm to dither the image, a process that turns grey into dots a bit like pointillism painting technique from the French Impressionist painters. The last step is converting from one byte pixel to one bit per pixel, which was done with some help from the paint class. This also added in the rotation needed for the display. We've been struggling with a new development board, perhaps trying to get different types of hardware working together. Then, well, why not go up to the Element 14 community and see if they can help? Or, if you've made an interesting project using NeoPixels, we'd love to see it. See you there. Thank you for watching.